And welcome back to Hannity. So earlier this month, when details from Gary Burns' tell-all book began coming out, well, the Clinton campaign, they went on the offensive, well, releasing a short statement saying, quote, Gary Byrne joins the ranks of Ed Klein and other authors in this latest in a long line of books attempting to cash in on the election cycle with their nonsense. Now, it should be put in the fantasy section of the bookstore. We continue now with the author of the book, Crisis of Character, a White House Secret Service officer discloses his firsthand experience with Hillary, Bill, and how they operate. Former Secret Service officer Gary Byrne, 30 years of service, your book isn't even out, and they smear you. Yes. So now that it's yes. out, I guess they'll really start smearing you. Yes, I, I, yeah. I believe that is going to happen. Is that, is that is, you know, you, you tell those stories, go to hell, she would say to officers, go sure. F yourself. Yes. Throwing a Bible at an officer. And an agent, yeah. And even you're saying you lashing out at many sure. agents. Sure, and officers. And yeah. now trying to smear a 30 year stellar reputation. Yeah. What's your yeah. reaction to that? Well, my reaction is I'm, I'm an Air Force veteran. I spent 25 years in the uh, federal law enforcement protecting them. And I realized they're bent out of shape um, about me uh, coming out and telling the truth. But it is the truth. It's the story of my life. And they just happen to intersect it. And uh, as I mentioned before, the reason I'm doing it. So you it, expected this? I did. I, I'm prepared for it. Yeah. Uh, I don't like it, but it is what it is. And, and when I decided to come forward and tell my story, I, I knew I'd be. You expected it because them. you know them. I do. I know yeah. them well. You said she berated, meaning Hillary, Vince Foster till he could stand no more. Right. That implies that she drove him in you, part. You know, nobody knows why somebody takes their own life. But I can tell you, when I met Vince Foster in the White House and I saw him walk around, I never saw anybody that didn't want to be there more than he didn't want to be there. He looked so uncomfortable. He, he, and there were many incidences or stories um, where um, the staff would hear her berating Vince and, and she blamed him publicly for some of the things that they, they didn't get done. And um, as, as a lot of people know, in his suicide note, he basically said that, you know, that Washington, D.C. was this terrible, vindictive place. And uh, it was one of the reasons he t took his own life. Yeah. I mean, it's a terrible thing. Um, I didn't know him well, but uh, um, I was very sad when he, when he uh, did take his life. But I was not surprised. You found it Bill Clinton, me. in spite of all his infidelities, a nicer person. He is. Yeah, he's yeah, very... would want to give people their time and sure. do and be polite and was like that more in real life. He was. He was. He'd look you right now. I you know, talked to people. Yeah. Um, he was very kind. I actually got to introduce my parents to him one time, and, and uh, they remembered it forever. You knew about many affairs. We don't know about all of them, do we? No, no, and I don't know about all of them. Uh, I, I just certainly know about... But this is the Oval Office. This is the sure. President of the United States. Isn't that a national security threat? Yeah, I, I would think it is. I mean, my, my question was at the time when I was being forced to te testify and, and uh, being and You didn't want to testify. No, I never wanted to talk about this at all. Never. Yeah. And I know that sounds silly now because I'm coming out, but clearly I've walked through some, some door where I think it's time and, and it's important to do. How many women do you know for sure he had affairs with in the Oval Office? Uh, in, in, the, in the White House complex, we'll say, I'd say easily three, maybe it's four that I know of. And you saw Monica Lewinsky a mile away. Sure. Sure. You knew she, what she wanted she to be was, near him. She was certainly manipulating the, some of the staff, myself, other officers and agents to find out where the president was. So she well, could, she wasn't manipulating if you saw through it. Well, yeah, the, the, I, I agree. But, I mean, I saw through it right away. She was no. trying to place herself in his path when he would move around the complex. Now, you never actually saw them together. No. Uh, well, not alone. Not alone. All right, but you did see, you walked into the map room, I believe, and uh, you did see... Actually, that, I'm sorry, that's not correct. I did see them alone. You did see them alone? Yes. And what a, did you see? Well, uh, there was an incident one time where um, during their affair, she showed up on a Saturday to... Um, said she had to deliver something to the president. Was that the Saturday? Yes. During the shutdown? No, this was before that. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry, this was after that. This was after that, and she showed up on a Saturday under the pretense of delivering some newspapers mm -hmm. or something, which she already had copies of. The staff wasn't in yet because it was Saturday. Right. And uh, so I, I blew her off. I told her to leave, and about five minutes later, the Oval Office door opened up, and the president said... Um, somebody come by? Yeah. Yeah, if somebody tried to deliver something to me, and, and I, I looked at the agent, and he's like... And after the president closed the door, he said, I told you, Gary, stay out of it. Don't stop trying to stop her. You know, the, wow. the, you don't know what goes on out on the road. So um, Out on the road. So in other words, he was telling you that this is nothing. Right. That was the, yes, exactly. That's what he was telling so me. So you knew that, that something was going on there. Right. But, but you actually walked into the map room and saw the president with former, with, with former presidential candidate, Vice President Mondale. Yeah. 
and with, with his, his daughter. daughter. Yeah, with his daughter. Yeah, so I, I stopped by uh, on the way from the East Wing to the West Wing to say hi to a friend, and one of the Navy stewards walked up with a shirt for the president, and he, the president was waiting in the map room for him, and the steward opened the door to walk in the mat room, map room, and he was looking back at us and not at the end of the room, and when he opened the door, the president was standing there with um, Eleanor Mondale, and they were like uh, teenagers, you know, locked, standing up, locked, uh, making out, and they didn't even look up at us. They never saw us. You knowingly had a situation where, how do I say this delicately, you got rid of evidence. Let's put it that way. I did. But it wasn't subpoenaed. It no, was, it was no, not this, illegal what you did. Right. This was before we knew there was an investigation going on. And uh, I was trying to help the president. I was trying to protect him from more scandal and, and embarrassment. And uh, the steward came up with some um, towels that um, had lipstick on them. And then another time with um, stuff that um, is, you know, a, a Bodily fluids? From a male, yes, and um, thank you. And, um, I'm trying to help you out here. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to help my TV audience yeah. out here more. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to keep it uh, PG. Yeah. So, um, uh, so the, the steward was highly distraught over this, and, and he complained that it had happened before. So I, um, well, I, I took a plastic bag and I had him thrown into it, throw the towels in there, and well, I I think it's a little them. unfair to leave that for somebody else, don't you? Yeah, but, but based on what, what I've seen before, they don't think about that. They just do whatever they want to do. Was it common knowledge this president was doing all this? Did you think she knew, Hillary? I do now. I, I mean, I can't tell you when I decided that she knew and accepted it, and that was the way it was, and then once in a while she'd blow up over it. But, like, when the Monica story came out, my, thing, my feeling at the time was that she wasn't upset about the, the, the breach of their marriage. She was upset because the, she, he dented the... Clinton brand again. He made them look bad again. Yeah, and that, so it was more about image again. That's, that was, that's but when you heard, when you've heard those stories of Kathleen Willey, Paula Jones, Juanita Broderick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, after I, I saw their stories, after I had worked there for a while, I will tell you that my gut feeling is they're all telling the truth. I mean, you can't act like that. I mean, he's been acting like that his whole life. And I do believe, especially uh, Kathleen... But if everybody... How did he possibly keep it contained? Did he not know he that as the president? He doesn't, and he doesn't seem to care. He just keeps behaving in that odd... It's like a vicious wow. cycle.